Hey, this is Brent with Lackens Motorsports. Um, as you're seeing on the screen there, we were able to dyno a uh, 465 cubic inch tunnel port Ford FE yesterday. And um, I'll tease you a little bit with the sound being off, but I will tell you that it sounded very mean, even at uh, 6,000 RPM. So we'll go through uh, the build specs of this engine. Uh, we started off with a factory side oiler block coming in at 4,250 bore. Um, we do our normal treatment to these, um, bake and tumble them to make them look like new, put some good VHT engine paint on there, uh, board and honed with torque plates, I line honed with ARP fasteners and the deck squared up. And then we put in um, Durban cam bearings. And as you can see there, we've slid in a custom hydraulic roller camshaft. All Fords will benefit from something other than an off-the-shelf cam. And uh, the more custom tailored to the engine build and to the application, the better. Tunnel ports are even more um, specialized as far as cam specs go. And uh, for a street engine, you need to balance the amount of overlap going through uh, the cam um, with the amount of overlap that you need to run your accessories and everything like that. So these big fat intake ports really like a lot of overlap uh, for the exhaust port uh, to help scavenge the intake port. This, these heads were not um, worked over as far as changing the port. Um, dimensions or anything like that so it is literally a factory port and we'll go into more detail about the heads here in a minute but the camshaft was a 241 254 at 50 and uh, I don't give out all my cam specs I've worked very hard to fine-tune these cams over the years different cam swaps and multiple iterations of engines and um, it's not something that I like to just pass out to, to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. So, um, a pretty mild cam for, for this type of build. Hydraulic roller, nothing major. But uh, let's go into the rotating assembly and I'll show you all those parts. So, for a lot of these builds uh, using factory heads, the combustion chambers are all over the place. That's literally the case with tunnel ports and high, high risers um, they'll swing by 10 or 15 cc so it's really best to get a custom piston and uh, these custom pistons are from race tech um, with a 22 cc dish valve reliefs for the big 225 176 valves uh, these are made to work with a big block chevrolet connecting rod since we're using a scat uh, cast four and an eighth inch stroke crankshaft and uh, some scat rods on this one so the cast cranks from scat are awesome pieces um, I've seen a lot of guys put 700 horsepower through those um, usually at the 650 700 horsepower mark I'm, I'm reaching for a steel crank but they are very strong um, a scat I-beam rod is all that you need and um, I prefer I-beam rods over the H-beam rods for, for multiple reasons. Um, everybody automatically thinks an H-beam rod is stronger, better, um, but that's not the case. So in, in a lot of situations, you will be better off with an I-beam rod. They are much lighter than the H-beam rod. That will save you some money on balance work. Um, if you look at something like an Oliver rod, they are I-beam by nature. So... H-beams are not inherently stronger, but um, the scat crank with the I-beam rods and race tech or Molly pistons are an excellent uh, rotating assembly combination. This engine's obviously internally balanced, but uh, the compression ratio is just 9.8 to 1, which will uh, help you appreciate the horsepower that it makes when I show it here after a while. Here's the gratuitous uh, rotating assembly picture. Uh, again, 427 block cross bolted mains, ARP main bolts, scat 
cast crankshaft scat I-beam rods. Chloe's billet timing set. We got some VHT satin black engine paint. Uh, as you can see there in the back, I do not use the rubber side seals. I use silicone. It has not let me down thus far and it saves me a lot of time shaving and manipulating and uh, nails don't belong in engine blocks, they belong in houses. There's a view from the top. Got those race tech pistons in there. Factory timing cover with a um, a Carter M6905 fuel pump. Got our power bond harmonic balancer and a new oil filter adapter with a Wix filter. All of the gallery plugs have been converted to uh, a screw-in pipe plug. Makes things a lot easier and a lot more reliable. Once the pistons, rod, and cranks are in, we can um, check out our piston to valve clearance. And um, I usually use clay, and I try to set it up as closely as I can to the way that the engine would be running. And for intake radial clearance, we are at 85 thousandths with an intake depth clearance of 190. And then on the exhaust, we had a 190 radial clearance and a 190 depth clearance both. So more than um, more than enough piston to valve clearance with, with this particular camshaft and with these pistons. And for the cylinder head side, we are using factory forward tunnel port heads that have been um, also baked and tumbled so they look like new. Bronze valve guides and 1132nd SI stainless valves to bring things up into the modern area, era, not using the heavy 3.8 stem stuff. Cylinder head is uh, one of the biggest components of making horsepower, so we need to treat it right. Here's uh, showing the size of the intake port. We've also got some comp cams, valve train on there, some 930 springs. Then here's a shot of the assembled heads, all ready to rock and roll. Tunnel ports are absolutely my favorite FE. They make some awesome horsepower right out of the box without touching anything. And there's a lot of potential in those as well. Here's another shot of um, of the short block with the, the timing set and everything on there for the mains. Um, we're usually running about three thousandths on the main bearing clearance and then uh, somewhere between 2.2 two and 2.5 on the rod bearing clearance with the big block Chevrolet rod. Coated bearings when I can. This one had standard Federal Mogul race bearings on the mains and coated Clevite rod bearings. And then turning the engine over, um, we've got our milling uh, oil pump with a uh, Canton pickup. We're using a high volume pump on this one. Um, I'm usually uh, a B pump kind of guy, but um, it depends on what, what's available on the shelf at the time. 
checked uh, pickup to pan clearance get everything bolted on front sump oil pan for this application then we're going to bolt on our adjustable billet aluminum timing pointer and our power bond balancer it's a good combination power bond makes some excellent harmonic balancers from street all the way up to some race stuff ARP balancer bolt again Canton gets the nod for front sump oil pan this one's a deep sump, front sump pan. Morel hydraulic roller lifters. These are the standard travel lifters. We're using uh, Felpro 1020 head gaskets. <clears throat> One cylinder heads um, bolted up. Then a shot of uh, probably when we were doing some piston valve clearance checking of the other head being bolted up. A lot of weight there hanging on that engine stand. Then we're going to show off the intake manifold as well as the uh, TND tunnel port rockers so these are the street rockers 176 ratio uh, typical FE shaft mount they do offer some paired rockers for the tunnel port but um, I don't like using those um, when you mill the heads down for those rockers um, there's a potential to get into some some water there if you're not careful and with the tunnel port stuff being as rare as it is I'd prefer to go another route And starting to look like an engine, got a factory style um, distributor with a Protronics conversion in there. Uh, distributor is locked out for this application. Blue Thunder Holman Moody valve covers, a factory style water pump, and a pair of 715 CFM uh, carburetors from Drew Pojednik down in Georgia, Air Fuel Spark and um, those carburetors didn't need anything after we bolted them on we didn't touch a screw literally on the dyno air fuel ratio was perfect um, mixture screws were perfect just everything really really nice had a balance line in between both carburetors and didn't have any issues with the uh, the secondaries opening just a, a real strong combination alright so Let's take a, a video here and uh, listen to it sing.
All right, so very mean sounding engine, just even with just going to 6,000 RPM. And if we look at our dyno sheet and we start uh, at the left, you'll see that we normally look at our oil temperature. On some situations with a, a deep sump pan, you will, uh, you will see the oil temperature actually go down a little bit, which is what happened here. We lost about, uh, I don't know, almost half a degree of oil temp. Um, measuring the water temperature off the cooling tower, that's why it says 13. It's a bogus number. Oil pressure went up through, throughout the pool. Uh, air fuel ratios were pretty much spot on to where we want them to be and we made 543 pound-feet of torque and 575 horsepower at just 6,000 rpm so 465 cubic inches 575 horsepower at just 6,000 rpm with only 9.8 to 1 compression so a very very stout engine for a street car a customer it's it's going to uh, northern Tennessee customers going to put it in in a comet so be a nice little fun ride for for driving around thank you guys for um, sitting around and listening to to this bill going together if you look back through my videos you will see various um, I think I put up a few videos of, of this being assembled and, and the different components but uh, thanks for your comments and reviews and uh, hopefully this will give you some inspiration to put your own FE together hope you guys are having a good week and uh, I'm gonna sign off so I'll see you later